Hey, welcome everybody. Brother Dan Goodwin here. Brother Dr. Char Charles Hiltzbitter with me here, my co-host. Uh, Doc, we're going we're gonna to continue our discussion from last week on your DVD set, uh, The mm -hmm. Truths of Christmas. Yes. DVD, CD, folks can go to the website and it will be right there on the front page of Cross in the Spotlight and you can get those. Uh, we want to thank those who are listening via the radio, whether you're in your car or home or wherever you are. And of course, many of you are watching YouTube and uh, we want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button down there, hit the like button sh and share these things. Um, if you didn't, if you missed last week's uh, on YouTube, go back and watch those. There's, there's the update uh, radio and the TV program and there'll be a TV program following this. And uh, some exciting stuff that Doc has got for us uh, about the Christmas story that has yes. been warped by traditions yes. and things that aren't uh, biblically accurate. Tradition has robbed us of the great value and the insights and applications yeah. that are there. And uh, I think we're going to start, Doc, with, uh, we're, I think we're going to go right to the wise men. Let me read a verse or two mm -hmm. from Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to hit on this in the TV program also, but uh, of course, Luke chapter 2 gives a version of the Christmas story that's my favorite. It's, Ma it's the birth itself, yeah. yes. Matthew 2 starts, seems to start with, uh, with the announcement from the, the wise men yes. from the east who have come seeking yes. something that, that they saw in the stars in the heavens. So let me read it here. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. That ought to be hint enough that yes. we've got the story wrong. Yeah. He's already born, and these guys in the east suddenly yeah. decide to come and see yeah. him. Well, you don't just jump on a plane. You, no. you, you're not there instantaneous. Um, um, so, and then verse 2 says, saying, where is he? They come to Jerusalem. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. And, of course, and the story goes on. Mm -hmm. Herod's uh, taken yes. by, by surprise yeah. here. His wise men, they, they've missed this. Right. And, uh, and, that, and that's true about the, the, the coming of Christ. The world missed it. They missed it then. And they're going to miss they're missing the second it now. coming. Yes. Yeah. And uh, on Christmas Day, the week of Christmas, we're going to do a show about that, you and I, mm -hmm. about, about the similarities and the shadow of the first coming, Amen. showing what's coming yes. for the second coming. And uh, Doc, why, why did they go to Jerusalem, these wise men? Well, it, it appears from historical documentation, um, it, we need to go all the way back and understand Daniel was not only a great prophet it, that we see him, he was also a great historian. Mm -hmm. But Daniel was in charge of all the schools of Chaldea. So that meant Daniel was the head teacher. He was in charge over all their educational system. And Daniel had taught concerning the movement of the constellations to announce when Christ was coming. Mm. One of his star students was named Zoester. And today most people are familiar with the word Zoastrianism. That is a former religion that came out of the Chaldean world that went into all of the uh, Eastern world. Uh, even today, Zoroastrianism is a part of India and China and others. And so uh, they were in the East, as it said. They saw the movement of the constellations. To them, it announced this. Secondly, in those movements of the constellations was the constellations Pallades. And as a result, that was always to them in their day, always stood for Jerusalem. And uh, so they knew by the constellation that something major had taken place in Jerusalem. And to them, it was probably the fulfillment of the great teacher, Daniel, from centuries past. And they know that they're, these are Jews. They, they know that. Mm -hmm. And... And I guess you go to the capital, right? Well, the, these that were looking from moving weren't Jews that were coming from the east. Right, but I mean, they knew that but, the, the king that was born yeah, was of the Jews. They knew that. And so uh, where and else would you go but to, you're gonna go to where to the Jeru king would be? You're going to go to Jerusalem. And the next verse said, uh, when Herod and the king heard these things, uh, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. Yeah. Can you imagine 
uh, maybe a thousand camels in a camel train show up all of a sudden out of nowhere to speak of. Uh, of course, they had to have had a little forewarning that such an entourage is coming. So when they get there, I mean, they're all trouble. What is going on? Yeah. And so the next part of the text says they, they're going to search the scriptures to find out. <laughs> yeah, about time they get them yeah. the Bible out and find out. And they out. shouldn't have because they should have known that according to Daniel's prophecy, we're about 30 or so years before the presenting of the prince that's to come. Yeah. So if he's going to be a prince, we ought to be looking for it. Right, and there's no, there was no excuse for them not knowing his season. Yes, right. Um, and so, uh, so they show up. Uh, representing a 13 federated nations on the east side of the Roman Empire. Uh, they've come because they want to pay homage uh, because heaven has announced heaven's appointed king is on the earth. So they're bringing a gift that we view as uh, from the spiritual nature. Uh, deity in humanity and the suffering uh, but they were presenting it as heaven's appointed king in a way of saying, we recognize this is going to be heaven's appointed. When he becomes the king, he doesn't have to conquer us. Our nations are in submission. Well, let me ask you this, and this, this, isn't, part of, this isn't part of the discussion, and I may be putting you on the, on the, uh, on the hook here, but um, these wise men and this entourage that comes in, are these believers no. in your mind? They're not believers in our sense of thinking. No, they were coming purely as representatives of their nations. Coming because under the, under the religious dogma and teaching of Zoroastrianism, they were looking for heaven's appointed king because they knew it was going to happen sometime. They were looking forward to it. But heaven's appointed king, but not in the sense of not our in the, understanding. Not, that's where, just like I uh, sharing with you earlier, most of our people in our churches and in the Christian community, they do not realize there were other kingdoms outside of the four kingdoms uh, of Daniel chapter 2. But these are mentioned because these are the kingdoms that have to do with the life of Israel. Mm -hmm. But there were many other kingdoms outside, and at the time of the Roman kingdom, there were other kingdoms as big as they were. But we don't see that because we're not students of world history, and, and that's okay. We need to be students of the Bible history yeah. first, but true. Now, your Truths of Christmas DVD and CD set, they're about three hours long, three mm -hmm. discs in each one, and uh, you can either get audio or you can get the DVD. Yes. They're on the website, Protestant Spotlight. Uh, just click on it, take you right to Doc's bookstore. All this and so much more that we can't even touch on is in these. It's yeah. over three this hours. Is just, this is just a part of the information that's on the third. And you're, you're not only pointing out truths of Christmas, but in, in doing so, you're shining the light and you're, you're kind of shining the light on things that are not so. Traditions that right. we have that, that are True. not biblical. Right. And this is one of them. And, this uh, is just one of them. Explain, yes. explain that. What, what, do we, what do most people have wrong about these, the wise men? Well, number one, they, they have the number. They think there's only three wise men, but there were three gifts. And think a minute. Uh, according to the 27 Talmud, whenever uh, Gamaliel sat down with Mary, she even relates that the gift that they brought helped sustain them while they were staying with some of her family in Egypt. Anyway, so, uh, so there wasn't just three. Can you imagine coming as, as representatives of 13 federated nations? Uh, you're talking about physicians and uh, lawyers and sheriffs and, and leading people, uh, ambassadorship, so to speak. Are they, they're coming all of these many, many miles from the east. Well, they're going to have their cooks. They're going to have brought their, uh, their wares with them. Security all, details. They're going to have their, their military with them. 
This is not just three guys making their way across the desert. Yeah. This is an entourage. Uh, the historian that was living in Syria said that the first camel left at sunup out of the gate of Damascus, and the left one, last one left at the uh, at the sun going down. I'm sure that was an exaggeration, but. Yeah. But in other words, it, was it was a large, it was a large group, and it took a long time for it them to get. It took a long time for this thing to go. Yeah. And with all of that together, you can imagine how how far they made it each day, camping out, doing everything, yeah. and making their way the next so day. So, in other words, the, the, what I call the manger scene, the nativity, the nativity call scene, it, um, yes. is not what we've been taught. No, uh, there's no the wise men out there kneeling down with their gold, frankincense, and myrrh. No, they didn't show up until. No, well, even your Bible says they. He's a he's a young child. That's right, and he's in the house. Yeah, and it wasn't even. In Bethlehem. Right, he's in Egypt, isn't he? No. He, oh, no he's going to go to Egypt shortly. They're going to go to Egypt after that, but, right. but they're, no doubt, probably, they are back up uh, north at Nazareth. Yeah. Because your Bible tells you uh, after the days of her purification, they went back to their home yeah. in Nazareth. So they're in Nazareth. So when these show up about 18 months later, Again, when they leave the presence of Herod, the Bible says the light, show, uh, the light led them. Well, no star can lead you north and south. The way the orbits, the way stars move, it's east and west. And so what was the star? There are all kinds of things, and I'm not, I'm not disagreeing or agreeing, but I think it was more or less the Shekinah glory of God that was leading them yeah, could to be. find their Savior. Yes. And most likely they went to Nazareth, most found likely. him, and then the angel told because them, don't that, go back to Herod. Because he was a young child in the house. And, and, uh, and, and they're told to get out of Dodge, yes. go to Egypt, and because the death he's going to hunt down all of the descendants out of that yeah. area, Bethlehem. Eight, he's going to, yeah. everybody that got registered about two years before at the census, he knows who they are. He knows exactly yeah. where they live. He's ready to track them down and get rid of those baby boys. And yeah. his, he's, he's put on trial for this. Herod is going to lose his, Herod's going to lose his kingship. And in the process, he's going to kill some of his own ch own sons to prevent them having his throne. And history says he died the very week that he was to give up his throne. Mm. Anyway, all of this is in historical documentation. Yeah. And, uh, so the manger scene that we that we put up is wrong. The, the yeah. The, and I'm the, not saying you ought not put it out. Uh, don't get me wrong, because. Those are all the major players They're in the not, story. Right. They're just not all there at the same They're time. They're not all there at the same time. And, uh, and uh, but it's, the, the whole thing is this. God has truly sent his son who one day will be the king. Mm -hmm. But he didn't come the first time to be the king. He came the first time to be the redeemer and to pay the redemption price. Yeah. So in his second coming, he's coming king of kings and lord of lords. Yeah. And uh, setting up that kingdom. And we're going to do a show uh, the week of Christmas. It'll air. Yes. Uh, about the, the shadow of the first coming showing what's coming at the second yes. coming. And I wrote a chapter yeah, about very that. Very similar. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but there's so many things about that story that are, that are practiced or believed about the Christmas that are not, they're non, not biblical and they're not historical. Yeah. Yes. Well, folks, we're getting running down to the end of the clock here, and uh, we appreciate everybody that's watching us. And uh, remember, we're viewer and listener supported. If you want to be a part of this ministry and partner with us, go to the website, and you can donate right there, or get the go to the 800 number and call, and you can you can talk to somebody. You can get us on the phone, or you can donate via the telephone with your credit card. And uh, we're coming up on that next big bill that's coming, and we need your help if you can. And uh, if you like what you see here, um, okay. Well, uh, Doc, thank you. And uh, folks, until next time, keep your eyes on them skies.